This Haydn thing comes out of a really strange start, yeah? I mean, you did, you did, you did a concert in a venue which I program, which was not the greatest evening, and really not. And out of it, actually, I heard you play a Haydn sonata on a very bad piano to yes. an empty audience, and I thought... <laughs> I remember the piano tuner as well. Yeah, it's the only time I've ever known a piano tuner actually get cross with a pianist. It's always, <laughs> it's always the other way around. <laughs> it's funny now, it wasn't funny at the time, I was really yeah. embarrassed. But, but I remember in the car on, on the way back to the hotel, quite upset that you'd had such a bad time, saying, look, you know, that Haydn sonata was really special. Could you play lots of them? And that's sort of where it came from, isn't it? Yes. Yes, and uh, I didn't play much Haydn back then, but but I've always I've always loved the music, uh, but I didn't really know much about it. Um, so it really your uh, your words triggered <laughs> curiosity. Well, it's, uh, I mean, it's interesting with Haydn, isn't it? Because there, there's always every, everybody knows that there's vast amounts of it, and yet he still somehow not quite got the same kind of clout with audiences that, that Bach has or that Mozart has mm -hmm. or that Beethoven has. And yet, I mean, and these with musicians too. Yeah. Uh, and yet, it's, it, is, it, is it just because people haven't in, examined it enough or it's not been a priority? Because the sonata cycle that you've just done, I mean, the music is extraordinary on yes. any level. Yes. Yes, I don't know really why. I think, I think probably because people don't know. Because if you go through them and you listen to them and you play them, it's, you can't not be taken by them. There is some kind of bizarre partnership 250 years later where, you know, you've got inside his head somehow. The performances are absolutely fluid. They never feel over-intellectualized. They feel fresh. They feel, you know, they're technically utterly secure, but they feel risky. The speeds are scarcely safe. There does seem to me to be something about an absolute understanding of, 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 of classical style that just sits perfectly with the wit. It's the wit that works. I mean, there are pieces by Haydn that are as great as anything, aren't there? there, there, oh, there is. Oh, my God, so, so many. Yeah. The imagination and the inventiveness in this music. But it's not like Beethoven. With Beethoven, you, you just can't not submit to it. Yeah. With, with Haydn, you have to come to yeah. it, I think, and, and you have to be curious to go to him. But, I mean, one of the interesting things is he, clearly he was largely writing to entertain, whatever. I mean, they're, they're, they're very good audience pieces, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Very pleasing. They're very pleasing. He knew exactly how to please the audience yeah. and what, how the audience will react. Yeah. Uh, he knew all the tricks. And he, he also, is, you may disagree, to me, the only composer whose jokes are actually funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, they're genuinely oh my God. funny. Yes. The last, you know, the, the last C major sonata, yeah. the last movement, I mean, it's so... It's so hilarious. And, and the pauses in the pauses in the last moves yeah. of the symphonies and things like that, which fool audiences yeah, yeah. into clapping early. Yes, you absolutely. Can just, you can just see him sitting in a room, can't you? Saying, "How can I yeah. mess with their heads?" Yeah. <laughs> what would you think be main difference between Haydn and Mozart in their language? Well, I think <laughs> I think that's that's more a question for you to answer than for me. <sighs> It's the unpredictability, actually. You know, I mean, Mozart may have more of a lyrical gift. I, actually, not so much. But I mean, you know, but but just, I, I'm unaware of any piece of Haydn I've ever listened to, even going really, really early, but there hasn't been a moment in it when I've thought, good grief, that's incredibly modern, or I've never heard that before. And what's the difference between playing Mozart and playing Haydn? Well, I think in Mozart, I think the main dif difference is this, this vocal, horizontal line that that never ends with yeah. with Haydn it's much more motivic yeah. it's uh, it's much more vertical mm -hmm. uh, there are more sharp angles mm -hmm. to his music it's a very different thinking about, I mean, the other about thing that development Mozart, Mozart never, Haydn does I mean it's it's not un sorry, this is very trite it's not unlike true but Haydn will just suddenly stop something and just go somewhere else absolutely you know there's there are just these side steps absolutely okay I was going down that path but actually that looks interesting, exactly. let's go there. Yeah. That doesn't happen in Mozart. No. Because it's all so joined up and so perfect. Well, James, let me ask you, uh, was it difficult on your end to, to convince? Well, no, actually. Um, I mean, I'm a great, I know it can be very boring, uh, and yet it can actually be incredibly exciting. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a great believer in collectability. 
and, and, and going on a journey with composers. So I've, I've got a bit of a track record here. Festivals are about Festivals are about doing mad things that you wouldn't do any other time. If you had done it as a subscription season, so you do it over a 10 month period, one height in a month, people would come to three, mm -hmm. you know. But they wouldn't make it a priority that, oh, that's festival. Of course. It's a claustrophobic they, thing, I'll follow it through. So they I feel like they I'd, own it. They yeah, feel absolutely. like uh, they develop this relationship with the composer. Yeah. But I, I, I really believe in, you know, occasionally bits of obsessive programming, because I think it takes people on a journey. Yes, we need more people like you. <laughs>